Well, hello. Welcome to our daily time of prayer and reflection. My name is Rich Schmidt, one of the pastors here at Living Hope. As I've been continuing to reflect on this past Sunday's message where God tells us through the prophet Samuel and through other prophets that he cares less about our religious observances than he does about our obedience, that we live rightly and do justice, especially for the most vulnerable members of our society, I stumbled across this prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. Let's pray it together. Almighty God, you created us in your own image. Grant us grace to contend fearlessly against evil and to make no peace with oppression. And help us to use our freedom rightly in the establishment of justice in our communities and among the nations. For the glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I can't help but hear echoes of the 4th of July in that prayer, especially where we prayed, help us to use our freedom rightly in the establishment of justice in our communities and among the nations to the glory of your holy name. Uh, we enjoy quite a bit of freedom in our world today, in particular here in the United States. But as Christians, we don't use that freedom to just do whatever we want, right? We talked about that on July 4th, on Sunday, as we looked at Israel's story in Scripture and how we don't want to go backwards to the time of the judges, to those days when Israel had no king and everyone did as they saw fit. We want to use our freedom rightly, living with God as king, listening to what he says and then doing it. If we do, then we find ourselves joining him in his work in the world, which includes loving and caring for our neighbors. Through the prophet Jeremiah, God told his people that he would help them avoid disaster only if you stop your evil thoughts and deeds and start treating each other with justice, only if you stop exploiting foreigners, orphans, and widows. Through the prophet Isaiah, God said he was tired of, the, of their religious offerings and ceremonies and instead wanted them to wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed. Take up the cause of the fatherless. Plead the case of the widow. Now, there are several ways that we try to live this out as a church family at Living Hope. You know, we make sure that we love and welcome everyone, no matter their social status or economic status, and we include them fully in the life of the church. We work with other churches to provide services and resources for people in need of food or shelter and that sort of thing. Uh, we work with nonprofits like Habitat and uh, Housing Opportunities to provide housing. We work with Free the Girls to help women escaping from sex trafficking. We work with World Vision to help children and communities around the world have good access to clean water. And as a part of the Church of the Nazarene, you know, we regularly support what's called the World Evangelism Fund, which funds all kinds of good works, missions around the world. We're trying to do right, to seek justice, to defend the oppressed, to take up the cause of the fatherless and the widow. But what does that look like in our own individual lives? How do we make sure that we're loving all of our neighbors, including those who are being overlooked or oppressed by others? You know, who are the vulnerable members of our society today? Are we exploiting them or speaking up for them? I can't help but remember Jesus' story that he told in Matthew chapter 25, where at the final judgment, the peoples are gathered together and divided into two groups, the sheep on the right, the goats on the left, one group welcomed into his eternal kingdom and one group expelled from it. And what makes the difference is how they treated the hungry, the thirsty, the stranger, the naked, the sick, and the prisoner, the vulnerable who needed help, who needed care. Jesus says that when we help them or don't help them, he takes that personally, as done to him. And this makes all the difference. Let's commit ourselves today to being more than simply religious. Let's listen to God and then do what he says. Let's allow God to be king and let's join him in his good and gracious work in the world. Let's pray together. Almighty God, grant that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. 
comfort, and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of your salvation. We commend to your mercy all who have died, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Now let's pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all.